All right, now I want to talk about platforms and plugins with Adobe um, Phone Gap, Apache Cordova. Um, I'm going to be focusing on the Cordova part of it throughout all these videos, but most of what I'm talking about applies to both Phone Gap and Cordova. So I've created a brand new project here, PMP for platforms and plugins. Uh, this is my platform or my uh, package ID rather. Uh, if we look inside here, you can see I've got a basic structure. If I go into the platforms, there's nothing inside there. If I go up and then into the plugins, it'll be just the uh, oh nothing right now because I haven't added a pen, uh, Adobe Android <laughs> has not been added. There's a default plugin that you get when you install Android. I haven't installed that platform yet, so there's nothing in there. Okay, so back to our platform and plugins app folder structure. Uh, we've got the two basic settings file, config.xml package.json. With version 7 of Cordova, which is what we're using now, package.json is going to be the one that wins out if there's ever any differences between the two of them. To add platforms, you need to have the SDKs installed for the platforms. Now I'm going to focus on Android and iOS here, but you need to have the development tools for those platforms to be able to use Cordova effectively and actually build something for those platforms. So let's take a look at Android first of all. If I wanted to add Android to Cordova, I can do it because I have the tools installed. I would say Cordova Platform Add Android. If I wanted, I could specify a specific version 6.2.2, but I'm just going to say Android, and that's going to give me the latest version. Okay, there it is, 6.2.2, the latest version. So Cordova Fetch is running, it's grabbing everything that's needed, and there we go. It's created, inside the Platforms folder, it's created a folder called Android. This is the package name that's being used. The target is... Uh, API 25 for Android. Okay, there we are now. If I go into platforms and OS again, there we go. Now I have a platforms.json file which explains what I've got installed. There we go. So there's the whole JSON file. It says I've got version 623 of Android. Uh, yeah, and then the Android folder itself. I that project. I thought it was inside of here. Right. Ah, okay. I stupidly created it inside my www folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this folder from here up to be at the same level here. There we go. So here is the folder I've got, platforms, Android, and you can see a whole bunch of folders inside of here. This is all of the native Java code, the Android manifest.xml. This is the settings file that Android uses for an application. Uh, these are the Cordova commands, Cordova build, Cordova clean, Cordova run. These are the Android, uh, sorry, command line commands for Cordova. Uh, platform WW, there's the Cordova JS file that gets added in during the build process. Resources, this is where your uh, XML files, your splash screens or icons, those are all st stored inside of here. Uh, source files, these are the plugins and platforms. Uh, so, CA, Griffith, Steve, PMP, main activity by Java. So, there's the main Java file for my Android application. And you can see it's using that reverse domain name that we're referring to. Or get Apache Cordova whitelist. This is the plugin that I was talking about earlier that gets added. So if we come back up to 
platforms and plugins, which was empty previously, there's the plugin. There's the Android JS, uh, Android JSON file defining all of the plugins for Android. There'd be an iOS one if I added iOS. So speaking of which, let's do that. I'm going to go back up. There we go, there's the project. Now all these Cordova commands that I'm running, I have to be inside my project folder when I run those Cordova commands. All right, now let's do Cordova platform add iOS. There we go, now it's using Cordova fetch to get the latest Cordova iOS, the latest stable version 4.4.4 or 4.4.0. You can see iPhone's iOS has been added. I'm installing the Cordova plugin whitelist for iOS. So inside here, I now have the iOS JSON and the Android JSON in my platforms folder. There's an Android folder and an iOS folder. And there's the Xcode project file for my app. So I could double click on this and open that in Xcode if I wanted to edit anything about the Xcode project. Okay, www, as always, that's where all of the web page, web technologies, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, your images, your media files, all those things are going to be sitting inside of here, your fonts. Okay. okay, back into here. Now, I've installed iOS, I've installed Android in my project. I've added those platforms. If I want to do Cordova platform add, I did add Android, add iOS, ls tells me the list. So installed, I've got Android 6.2.3 and iOS 4.4.0, and available to me, I could add these. Now, BlackBerry has been deprecated, BlackBerry 10, Firefox OS was also removed not too long ago, uh, WebOS still supported, that's the old Palm operating system that was created back in 2009. All right, so we have these platforms installed. Plugins, they work the same sort of way. Cordova plugins list. There we go. This is the only plugin that I've got. It lists one plugin, but I have the plugin installed for both Android and iOS. So there's two different versions of this plugin, but it's still just the one plugin. If you ever wanted to find a plugin, so all the platform commands, Cordova platform, add, Cordova platform, list, Cordova platform, remove is RM, and then you can give the name. With plugins, Cordova plugins, add, Cordova plugins, list, Cordova plugin, RM, for remove. And then you provide a name. Now let's say I don't know what the name is, but I know, okay, I want something to do with the camera. So I'll say Cordova plugin, or I can say plugin or plugins, they're both accepted. And I'm going to search for camera. I want to find out what the name of the plugin is. So that will take me directly to the CordovaPatchy.org site, the plugins section, and do the search for camera. So we can see there's lots and lots and lots. This is the standard one right here. Cordova plugin camera. And this is the naming convention that you'll find. All of the core plugins, the ones that are created by um, the open source community, the ones that are created by Adobe, if it is following the proper naming convention, then this is the name that they should use. Cordova-plugin-camera. So that is the name that I want. If I come back to the terminal, I could say Cordova. It's important to spell it correctly. Plugin or plugins, add, and then the name Cordova plugin camera. Now I can just run it like that, or there is an option. If I say save, what it's going to do is it's going to save the information about that plugin into my settings file, my config.xml file, and my package.json file. So it's currently installing it for Android because I have that platform installed. 
And after that, it installs it for iOS, because I also have that platform installed. Great. Okay, so we've got the camera plugin for iOS and Android both installed. If we take a look inside of our plugins folder, sure enough, there's the camera plugin. There's a uh, backward compatibility um, for iOS. That's an additional plugin that you get for free. It's kind of a dependency for the, uh, the camera. And the whitelist, which was installed automatically for us as well when we installed the platforms. You want to see all the plugins or platforms you have installed? We did the platforms already. The Cordova platform list. Cordova plugin list. There we go. And this is going to be what's inside of those JSON files as well. If we look at those now, so if we uh, we're in the PNP, so if we go into the plugins folder, and we can see here's all of our files. If I want to look and see what's inside the iOS JSON file, there we go. Installed plugins. This is the section that we want. The plugin whitelist the plugin camera, and the pad was a dependent plugin. It's there for the camera for iOS. So you'll see that a lot of the settings files are JSON files. Go back up one level and take a look at our package.json. Here's the contents of package.json. So name. That's the name of my app, the internal name. This is my version number. Now I can edit my, my package.json file and change the version number whenever I want. Description. Well, that's important to have. Um, if you're familiar with package.json and how it works, you'll know uh, what all these different parts are. The important thing for us to note right here is the dependency section. These are the different plugins. And these were added in here because I did that dash dash save when I added the camera plugin, so we've got added in here. Uh, right. So, plugins and platforms, that's how you add them, remove them if you want. If you wanted to remove, say, the iOS one, we can say Cordova platform on an iOS. And there we go, removing it from the config and the package.json. Jump back into Finder here with the platforms. You can see iOS is gone and the plugins. There's no longer an iOS.json. We've removed that platform entirely from the project. All right, what do we need to do the Android and the iOS development? For iOS, I'll start. That's the simpler one. If you go to the App Store and you search for Xcode, you see here it is. Xcode will require you to have the latest version of OS, OS X installed, so you'll have to do that before installing Xcode. You won't be able to get the latest version of Xcode if you don't have the latest version of OS X. So I have it installed already. I could just open Xcode, but I need that installed to be able to add the iOS platform. And then for Android, there's two things that you need. One is the Android SDK, and the simplest way to get that is to download and install Android Studio. If you download and install Android Studio, the SDK comes with it. It's pre-packaged, and then this also gives you uh, the ability to work on the native code. If you need to edit anything that's natively part of Android, you can do it in here. You want to build your own plugins, Android Studio is going to be a way you can do that. The other thing that you need is the JDK the Java development kit. Because Android apps are written with Java, you need the JDK. Now, don't confuse this with the JRE. JRE is the Java runtime environment. If you've ever run something on your computer that was built with Java, it means you needed to have the JRE, the Java runtime environment. It's a small little program that knows how to run Java programs. The Java Development Kit, SE, Standard Edition, this is the tool that you need to be able to compile programs written in Java. So if you come to this, and I'll put the links to Android Studio and to the 
JDK inside the comments for you guys. If you come in here, look for your operating system, Java Standard Edition Development Kit. So here's OS X. I would download that DMG file. For Windows, the 64-bit version, I would download and install that on my Windows OS. Once that's installed, and the Android Studio is installed, it means you're going to have the Android SDK and the Java Development Kit. Then you can use Android. Then you can install and compile Android apps using Cordova. Once you have Xcode installed, then you can install and build apps for iOS. Now, there are some other things with iOS. Um, you need to have your developer account with Apple, but that's a whole other ball of wax. There's a few other command line things as well, but I'm going to put all those into a separate video. Okay, that's all for plugins and platforms. That should give you more than enough information to get started adding plugins, adding platforms into your apps so you can compile and test them. Any questions, please leave them in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.